Hello everyone, so um, since I've made the video yesterday night, I realized that um, my camera setting was way off when I was testing the light with various uh, degree of light output and because um, right now what you see, um, the camera is actually set to Hello everyone, so um, since my review of the Godox SL150 yesterday night, I realized that because um, I was looking over the footage, my camera was in manual mode and it's, it's not focused properly in uh, most of the shots. So I decided to wake up today and then just redo a lot of those uh, lighting tests for you guys. Um, properly, so I'm going to make sure that my expose is correct. Uh, before I start video recording and also I changed my lens. This is my brand new Sony 55 millimeter f1.8 and uh, This lens is amazing for making videos because the focus is so quiet and so fast and it should track my eye without uh, too much trouble So we're gonna redo the test today. What I want to find out is if the light will be able um, to handle my assignment tomorrow, which is a quick interview and uh, from the test yesterday night, most certainly it's going to be able to handle the interview lighting situation without any problems. Um, right now, the light is actually set to 30% uh, brightness or output, and uh, color temperature remains at 5600K. Uh, and uh, um, as you can see, the since the lens is f1.8, so I set the lens, uh, the aperture to f1.8, shutter speed, 1 50th of a second. I'm recording 4K at 24 frames per second. Um, so the shutter speed should work just fine. Um, and uh, this is 30% setting, okay? So I'm gonna actually bump this all the way up to 50%. And by the way, I'm six foot away. Um, and uh, this is what it looks like at 50%. It should be more than enough to, um, it should be more than enough for my needs because when I'm setting up the interview, it's gonna be like this, kind of a six foot distance and with the light actually not far from the camera. And this is my uh, main light. So I'm gonna be having a few different lights also set up on the sides to fill in the shadow area and probably filling the background area uh, right now I have a fluorescent daylight balanced um, ring light that I'm actually going to turn on and then we're going to see how the light looks with the ring light turned on as a fill light on the side okay. so this would also be a good chance to test out um, if the fluorescent light could be mixed with a LED uh, daylight balanced video light. And that would be ideal because I honestly does not like working with tungsten light because it generates just way too much heat. Um, and it's kind of hard for me personally to color balance a tungsten um, lighting, uh, especially mixed with a whole bunch of other kind of uh, light source. And uh, so you guys take a look and see if actually because I, I already feel like the, the, my fill light is more bright than the main video light uh, because my fill light is only three foot away at 100% power and that is a fluorescent, fluorescent light. So I'm going to go back to the camera and check on the exposure and then come back and uh, we're going to do some more tests. Okay, so I just checked the footage uh, at f1.8, 1 50th of a second, ISO 100, 6 foot away, uh, with the light output of 50% for the Godox XL150. Uh, my face is already lit very nicely, in fact it's probably slightly overexposed. 
let me change it. Let me put it down to 40, 45%. And um, also, I turn off my, not turn off, I, I turn down my ring lights output just slightly. That is a fluorescent ring light. So I check the footage and it looks like I am gonna be able to mix the fluorescent, fluorescent daylight uh, balanced ring light with a LED daylight balanced light. Um, that is great news because they don't generate much heat at all. Um, so I am very confident the SL150 is going to fill the needs for my, it's going to fill the requirements for my interview uh, video shoot tomorrow. And uh, I'm also going to bring my ring light uh, just because it actually does a really nice job filling, giving me some extra fill light uh, on the side. And I'll show you guys what it looks like. This is my impact fluorescent ring light right over here. Um, it does the job just fine. Um, unfortunately, it does not have a good diffusion, so it's great for giving kind of of a uh, of a fill light, a bright fill light, and that, that just makes things looks a lot better. So uh, it's gonna be great for what it's gonna do, and that's the reason I'm gonna bring it. So leave it aside, and uh, the next thing that I'm gonna try to fix is actually use a microphone to see if it's going to be able to block the fan noise uh, from this really annoying lower quality fan that's running inside SL150. So uh, let me go get the microphone set up first and then we're going to come back and take a look and see if the audio difference um, to see if the microphone is going to be able to fix this problem. Okay, so what I have here um, are two things that I hope could fix my problem with the really noisy uh, fan noise from the SL150. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do a quick unboxing of the Rode VideoMic Pro. Um, I bought this from Best Buy, but you can get it from Amazon or any other major photo stores or video stores. Over here I have the Rode uh, VideoMic Go. Also going to do a quick unboxing all together and uh, test them out at the same time. So the VideoMic Go does not have a built-in battery, it's plug and go. Um, the sound quality of course supposedly is slightly less good than the VideoMic Pro um, and of course it does not have the option to give you a boost again of plus 20 dB like the video mic pro uh, however it's super easy to set up it does not require a battery it's pretty much plug and go um, the video mic pro of course from what I heard since I don't do a lot of videos uh, as a gold standard for I guess people who just starts out doing uh, videography and uh, it's a shotgun mic kinda um, that you can quickly mount onto your DSLR and then get way better sound quality compared to what the DSLR have um, have have to offer with the building mic. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at the Pro first. I'm just gonna open up the box. Your classic clamshell packaging. So nothing fancy, and uh, opening up the clamshell, you have a piece of, I guess that's uh, the quick start guide right over here um, in different languages. So first you have to install the battery, uh, which is a nine volt battery. So I have to go get a nine volt battery really quick. Um, and then I'm gonna be mounting the mic onto the camera and then put the proper mic through a cable clip somewhere on the camera. Let's see if I can find it. It says there is a cable clip. 
but I don't see the cable clip anywhere on the actual camera itself. Um, so the menu could be changed slightly. And um, the, the last step is just turn on the mic. Um, there are two options for the mic. There are, there are on and there are high pass filter. I think the high pass filter cuts out some of the noise if you're shooting outside. And there are three gain levels. There are minus 10, there are zero, and plus 20. I think the video mic go, of course, not the video mic go, the video mic have a minus 20, minus 10, and, and a zero setting. So the video mic go, a uh, video mic will be better for cutting out some of the unwanted voices. Um, but this one might be good for boosting up the voice if your camera is set up too far away from your subject. We're going to test both out, um, but the main thing I, w I really want to test out is if it's going to be able to block the fan noise or most of the fan noise out there. This is a foam. This is a foam um, windscreen. And inside, this looks like paper or, f or fabric. And uh, interestingly, like it's wow, the construction. <laughs> the construction looks a little cheap, honestly. When you take off the uh, the sound cover, because this this entire tube or this entire thing is made of plastic. Now I don't have much experience with video microphones, but this actually kind of feels like a cheap build quality to me. But I could be wrong, and. Uh, of course, I've seen microphones that's made of metal go way up to $200, $300 for a beginner or entry level one. Uh, so I would say this should be acceptable if the sound is really, really good. Okay, so I'm going to put back the phone back where it is. And I'm actually going to plug this into my camera. I'm going to test out the gain first to make sure the gain is correct and then I'm going to speak a little more and then we're going to test the sound difference between the building mic from the camera and the Rode Video Mic Pro. Okay. So right off the bat, I already very much dislike the battery installation on the Video Mic Pro. It's very cumbersome. The battery door is actually removable. That's freaking crazy, because I'm pretty sure I'm gonna lose this, and uh, it's really hard to push the battery in. Like, there's no way for me to comfortably push the battery all the way into the into the thing, and then close the door. Like, visually impossible. So I'm still struggling, as you can see. sweating so the battery install is really really not ideal uh, but that is what it is uh, for a affordable or entry level video mic um, so next I'm actually gonna plug it in and then we're gonna test it out this is the sound uh, recording that uh, uh, coming from the camera's building microphone and I'm sitting about six foot away testing one two three testing one two three and this is the sound coming from the Rode VideoMic Pro at six foot away let's hear if there's any difference test one two three and test one two three by the way, this is at uh, the gain set to minus 10. And uh, we're sitting here again, this time actually with the gain setting to minus 10. And I turn on the high pass filter. So let's hear if there's a difference between the fan noise um, 
compared to the very first video, which had the high pass filter off. And this is a test with the Rode VideoMic Pro with the gain setting set to zero. Test one, two, three. Test. This is with the Rode VideoMic Pro gain setting set to plus 20. I'm pretty sure this clip is gonna be blown out way too loud. So I'm gonna try to speak fairly lightly and see if there's a difference between the gain settings on the Rode VideoMic Pro. Now I'm speaking at half of the volume. Um, so notice the fan noise also, um, because that's uh, actually the noise I want to get rid of. Okay guys, so um, this time I adjusted the uh, gain back to the gain from the microphone back to zero and uh, I also adjusted the micro, the audio level recording setting in my camera. So now I'm trying to actually balance the output from six foot away to about uh, minus 12 dB. And I turn on the high pass filter. Uh, the high pass filter actually filters out some of the low frequency noises. So if you compare this video to the previous one with a high pass filter on, you can hear there's more of a uh, lower frequency like bass bass sound and also my voice sounds a little a little bit deeper um, so I think this setting is going to be closer to what I actually want to use at the actual recording and uh, hopefully it would do the job so I also took I also reviewed the footage of the earlier recordings um, unfortunately the fan noise is still there so I think for my upcoming projects um, I'm definitely going to be modifying the fan to make sure that it's not that loud uh, and then that would totally solve solve most of my problems I could use a higher gain um, and there's not gonna be noise from the my main uh, video light and the video um, session would go much more smoother and better uh, outcome after all those improvements so I'm excited to find out uh, later on um, after the interview so I may come back and do a final update on how the video mic performed and how the video light performed um, but for now I think the video mic pro is gonna do the job I'm not even gonna open the video mic go because it actually lacks some of the settings that I really want um, keep in mind this is a very basic mic it's a basic shotgun mic um, that you can mount onto your camera without any external battery options or without any other options that you can do so no high pass filter no gain, uh, no reduction. This is just very basic. And judging from the fact that the Video Mic Pro is the the tube is actually made of cheap plastic, uh, I kind of want to get a better shotgun mic after after this shoot. So I may even return the Video Mic Pro and then maybe get something just slightly better, like something slightly more durable. Um, that is my opinion towards the video mic pro. I Have no doubt it's gonna do well in most of the situations and it's very compact super easy to move around if you're doing outdoor shoots I think and if you're doing handheld, I think this mic is actually gonna help quite a lot Also, if you don't have any assistance to hold the mic for you this mic is gonna work great So again, thank you so much for watching at this video any other comments or questions please do feel free to uh, post in the comments section and I'll try my best to um, answer those questions for you guys. Thanks again and take care.